Nestled in the community of Pruitt, New Mexico, is the home of renowned Navajo silversmith Tanya June Raphael. She continues her family's rich legacy of creating Navajo jewelry. Tanya learned the process from her grandparents, Tom and Mary Raphael, beginning at the age of seven. She learned the Navajo philosophy of Tahoe Jitego and has been doing for herself since an early age. The self-discipline and dedication that she embodies was first demonstrated by her Che. Today, she still works in the same shop that her grandfather once occupied. While she was raised around jewelry making throughout her life, she said she began working earnestly as a silversmith professionally more than 18 years ago. Ayate, uh, Tanya, June, Raphael, Yenishia. My clans are Nakaidane, Nishlido, Kiaani, Bashishin, Dishini, Dashichedo, Belagana, Irish, Dashinale. Right out of high school, I work for a jewelry manufacturer shop. Um, it's more known as like, uh, piecework that a lot of the Navajo people get out here. What, what, how that works is um, uh, the, these manufacturer shops in, in Gallup or anywhere in Albuquerque, they uh, provide the silver, they provide the stones, and they'll provide a, a protocol, a, a, a design piece. And then you come home and you have to make like 50 rings that, that have, you have to copy that piece. You have to make 50 rings or 100 earrings or whatever. So I did that for Jerry Elkins and Gallup for since um, right out of high school in 1988 to about 91. And then I moved to Albuquerque, went to college and money was always a factor. So I had to make, always go back to jewelry making to make some money, you know, like just to pay rent or buy some groceries for the kids or something you know and so um, I worked I went to college and I worked for another manufacturing jewelry store in Albuquerque I worked there for seven years and there I learned how to do a lot of um, I learned the name of different stones I was the buyer for this the stone buyer for the company so I learned how to make the jewel the stones for the company and I knew I've I knew a lot of the the stone um, dealers and and then um, I learned the production part of the jewelry making so then after that um, you know jewelry making actually making a piece was always in back of my head I mean always because I knew the basics of it and then of course I worked retail in Old Town and Alba, uh, yeah, Albuquerque, Old Town. I worked for a few different stores there, so I learned the retail end of it. I worked retail for my dad's store in Lupton. Um, so basically, like I said, jewelry was always in the back, in my back um, knowledge of my life. And so, and then I had little pieces of my own. I would sell them like at feast, Pueblo feast days, flea markets. Um, um, powwows just the little shows and and then that you know I say in about 2001 um, that's when I kind of started making my first pieces like actually making my first pieces so went back to your original question how long I've been making this um, on my own I always say on my own making my first piece since 2001 so about what 18 years now You have to be smart about how to market, how to be out there marketing your pieces. I because that I have some um, years of experience of traveling to shows because I do juried art shows. I travel. I've been doing juried art shows since two thousand three, um, and I've been doing this for about fifteen years. So you kind of build this, um, the build a build a name, or you build the um, the credibility with customers. You build a customer base at different places, and so. I kind of, you know, go back and some of them are repeat customers from years. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's good. It's good for me today. There, these customers come out and they want native made authentic jewelry, um, Navajo authentic jewelry, sterling silver. They want to meet the artists. They want to talk to the artists. You go to these shows and you meet a customer and they come up to you. And that doesn't have to be 
um, Caucasian. It could be any anybody, even the Na other Navajo customers. They they don't they they're curious on how these pieces are made. Um, they come up and they always ask me how are these made? How is this? So do you tell them the the process of the whole piece? How it was made? Um, I like to work with color. I like to work with different color stones, um, basically from red coral, spiny oysters, purple, red, orange, browns, yellows, uh, of course, all kinds of turquoise. And turquoise is another story. There's some low range, medium range, medium high, medium high, high, and high, and super high. I, I kind of stay away from the super high. It's too intimidating for me because it's way too expensive. Um, and then... Um, so yeah, I work with, you know, kind of affordable stones, so my customers can afford my pieces. Uh, um, uh, my style, I would call it chunky cluster. I work with cluster. I'm, I was told that I'm bezel queen. I, I guess I, I don't know, maybe because I make a, I bezel a lot of stones. Um, so yeah, like chunky cluster with a lot of colors. Okay, so I buy metal sheet, which is uh, fabricated um, sheet like this from, I get my, plate, my sheet metal from two different suppliers in Gallup and um, wire. So the process is just basically sheet and metal, stamping, uh, bezeling, and then soldering and forming all of the wires. I mostly work nighttime, so it'll be night. It will be my typical night, but I usually I work till like about five o'clock in the morning. It's, that's pretty normal for me. People think it's weird, but that's my normal life. I sleep till like about ten, eleven, and then I get up and I do <laughs> errands and gallop. I um, do my supplier supplies run, uh, get my supplies, uh, ship out orders. You know, a lot of errands and gallop. By the time it's five, six p.m., and then back home dinner and maybe get a little rest and then go back go to work at 10 midnight and then go to work you know so basically that's how my days unless there's a show coming up like say for example this weekend it's like non-stop you get four hour i don't know that's crazy I, I don't recommend it but that's just how that's just me I, i'll work straight 48 hours and maybe get four hours in between that sleep so yeah yes i have and I, I i enjoy selling my pieces to julia as the buyer she's a good buyer and and they bought many many pieces from me and i that's how i noticed that my a lot of my work um was extended out to on all over the reservation i know they have stores in cameron they have the satellite store in tuba city and they have what in uh chinley uh of course winter rock and i think Am elamo so they yeah. Yeah, it's it's been 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 selling to them for about what maybe six years, five years. Yeah. Um, mainly from my grandparents, my grandfather Tom Mar Tom Raphael and my grandmother Mary Raphael. Um, and then there's several other artists living today. All oh, my grandparents are both passed on, but um, I get my, my main inspirations from them. But there are some other artists, a lot of artists that in inspiring to me, not necessarily just native. There are other, there's Mexican artists, there's, um, you know, other artists from different countries of, of the world that inspire me, not just in jewelry, but in painting, in um, sculptures, and even um, architect like home, building a home it's just those are the inspirations that I get from them it's just it's so it's incredible what the work they do um okay say I if I sell a piece for let's say let's say I made a thousand dollars um that thousand dollars it would be nice to keep all, but I don't keep the whole thousand dollars, so I'm not a thousand dollars. I didn't make a thousand dollars profit into my pocket. Um, I say that thousand, about seven hundred dollars, seven hundred fifty, seven hundred dollars will go back into the business. Stones and silver, that's what I do. And then a lot of times I have to pay for a booth fee, traveling money, everything else. But majority of it is all silver supplies, tools. 
uh, turquoise, stones, coral, everything, you know, it's, it all goes back. I love my Dallas Fort Worth people. I have a lot of customers in that area, so there's not a real show there that they used to have there. I used to do a show there, I loved it, but they stopped doing it. And so I, you know what? I'm just gonna um, get a hotel and rent a conference room. And I've been doing it, this is my fifth year. I just did that this past year. Um, rent a conference room and I just spread out emails to all my customer base, they tell their friends. I put it on Facebook. Facebook is my main um, advertisement. It's I love it. It gets it get it got me out there. So I use that, and then I will rent it for two days, and people come. And so yeah, I would call that um, out of the ordinary. You know, like somebody. I don't just follow a group. I'll try to get, wean off, and and then I'll do a small show in like Hawaii and. They'll, you know, sometimes they say, well, you go to a show, you don't make any money, you know. It's not necessarily about making money. It's about meeting a person and they, 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 they like what you do and you buy a piece from you and you become friends with the customer. So that's basically, it's basically, you know, um, friendship with the customer. Like I've been to Hawaii a few times every year I go there and, um, and I've met um, a couple of customers they became really good friends invited me into their home and now it's just like they're like my sister so it's neat it's I like that the traveling part of it oh yeah definitely it's very important to de to teach the younger the younger um the ne um generation definitely um the, definitely the art and it, it cannot die you have to keep it going we cannot get this made in other countries, other people to copy. We are the ones that made. This is our gift. It was given to us from, they say, the holy people. But um, I, I, I mean, I, I totally stress this out to to get to be this to be taught for to the younger people and then them to uh, make a living off of it. My grandmother once told me, and I'm gonna say this in Navajo if that's okay. She said. Um, the Nenle, she said, get a rock, pretend this is a rock. She goes, get a rock and send the ah, uh, I don't, um, nunch, a le, nunch, uh, be, uh, no, like a cocapelli or whatever, draw um, a rainbow or a horse. And then she said, you can sell it to tourists and you can have uh, money bread on the table. She used to say that. She says, don't just sit around, you take advantage of your, your native blood, be proud of who you are. And so that's kind of like, Put, put it in that perspective. Um, don't let nobody put you down. There are a lot of naysayers out there. There's a, the, a matter of fact, this past weekend, uh, this last two weekends ago in heard I had a young artist, just brand new, uh, coming up to me and said, what do you think? And uh, should I keep going? Uh, definitely, yes, keep going. There's like, oh, there's some art artists that they won't give me the names of the stone buyers. They said, I, I don't share my, you know, secret. I mean, I, I tell them, I say, yeah, here, here's a list, here, you know, do it. You know, don't let nobody put you down. He was telling me that um, people want to pay less money because he's new. I said, well, you, you put your price on how you feel like you, you did. Don't, don't undercut yourself. And and don't just don't listen to the naysayers. Ignore the negative. Just keep going and uh, be original. Be you know just just make just keep building. Don't stop. You know if you really like it, to keep it and keep it up. That's what I tell them. Oh, definitely keep supporting Nace. So they have all na native made things, Navajo made things, and that's nice. It's wonderful. Even my grandfather made contra belts years of back in the 50s or 60s whenever he said he used to sell to them so it's good I mean I'm glad that you guys have this um, enterprise and I'm glad you have it all over the reservation I'm glad you have a, a beautiful website that you can spread out over the whole world mm. and I do know that you guys do uh, uh, shows too that's good I mean I'm happy for that but I think you really need to just stick with the Navajo stay focused to the Navajo uh, made pieces like I said if it's made with paper if it's made with glass beads it's a Navajo made or native made but I know you guys predominantly use Navajos but if it's made Navajo then they made be uh, I'm all for it sell it uh, promote Navajo artists 
there's a lot of Navajo artists out there. I mean, so many were so talented that they don't have a phone. They don't have internet. They don't have the money to get out and travel and do their own, you know, to advertise, to sell. They rather, they like to just stay home. Like grandma, just she weaves her rugs and um, she'll take it to the market and sell it for kind of low price. But I think it's really important that these artists need to be, to come to their own tribal enterprise, which is now for arts and crafts, and um, sell their art, their craft, their wares, and you know which that you're doing. But keep keep going, and um, so because they don't have the money to get out, some of them don't have you know the means to get out to advertise on their own or to do shows, and every every support they can get is like major help for them. It, it's it's wonderful that they that you have this enterprise to buy from them. It's it's really good. Support all artists.